when the Americans bought New Orleans, one of the things that was most astonishing to them, there weren't just white people and black slaves. There were these people who were of African or partially African descent who were well-educated, who were sophisticated, who were well-dressed, who were rich, some of them, and who had their own very important social life. That was part of the, the disconnect for Americans coming here, to see black people in positions of success. Yeah, they were very surprised at the openness of the black population, free and slaves. There were free black people throughout the United States, but in most of the other states, particularly in the South, they were not that much better off than slaves, other than they could not be sold away. But basically their life was quite constrained. In New Orleans, because of the French and the Spanish background, the free people of color had almost all the rights of whites. Many of them had the skills which were very critical for developing a new society in the early 19th century. They had many, many professions. There were plantation owners, there were men who dealt in real estate. By the time of the Civil War, about two-fifths of all the land in New Orleans was owned by people who were of mixed race or, or blacks. I believe that these people who became people of means, they were able to interact with the other cultures because of what they had because they were looked upon prior to the Americans coming in. To be of the same stature, probably more of a thing with money than with race. At one point, free people of color had a higher literacy rate than the general population of whites. There was a lot of mixed socializing, whether it was dancing, gambling, going to a cockfight, going to horse races, listening to music, just spending the weekend drinking, whatever, socializing, partying. There was a lot of mixing. They were definitely a means of transferring African civilization. The island of Haiti, or as the Spanish called it, Hispaniola, was among the first places for European contact with the New World. By Columbus's second voyage, he had established an outpost there. Imagine two cultures coming into contact with each other. The difficulties there must have been for both sides to comprehend the other culture. Artistically, the Indians were masters. When you look at the talents of Native Americans throughout the New World, you look at their sensitivity towards the visual arts, toward music, it's part of their legacy from pre-Columbian times. The introduction of diseases and a series of armed conflicts caused the Taino and Arawak Indians to be eradicated in a large part by the middle or third quarter of the 16th century. The experience of the Spaniards and the Indians in Santo Domingo set a theme that was going to be repeated over and over again throughout the Americas. 